Welcome back to Movie Recapped. Today I will show you a horror, thriller film from 2015, titled 12 Feet Deep. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie begins at the Ketio public pool, where the manager McGrady, is hanging signs around that mention they will be closed for the holiday weekend. Meanwhile, one of our protagonists, Bree, is taking a swim, only taking a break to monitor her blood glucose levels. She is also wearing a diamond ring, which she considers taking off before returning to the pool. Outside in the parking lot, her sister Jana is sitting in her car, unsure if going in or not. After some moments of consideration, she leaves her phone in the glove box and enters the building, approaching her sister after changing into her swimming suit. Bree is happy to see her because they haven't hanged out in a long time. Jana had been in rehab, but she's been clean for three months now. After some chatting, Jana joins Bree in the pool. In the lost and found area, we find the janitor, Clara, trying to steal some money from the forgotten wallets. McGrady catches her on the act and mentions he regrets saying good things about her to her parole officer before firing her, but she must finish her shift to be able to leave. The sisters have a good afternoon swimming together until McGrady comes around to tell them to leave. Jana points out the pool is open until 7, so McGrady explains they are closing earlier for the holiday weekend and mentions that some people should learn how to read, to which Jana takes offense. The girls get out of the pool and start drying themselves up as Bree decides she wants to show Jana her ring, but she can't find it in her bag. Jana checks the water and finds the ring stuck in the metal grill on the bottom of the pool, so Bree jumps back in to retrieve it. No matter how hard she pulls, she is unable to free it from the grill, so Jana decides to jump in too to help her. Since both girls are underwater and the rest of the visitors are gone, McGrady thinks there is nobody left in the building and starts the process of closing up the pool. Yona's hair gets stuck in the grill, so the girls are busy untangling it and don't notice the fiberglass cover being released over the pool until it is too late, they are now trapped. Terrified. The sisters start hitting the cover and crying out for help, but McGrady is already leaving the building, and now Jana thinks he did it on purpose. After a moment of freaking out, they decide to try to push the cover up just to see how solid it is, but of course it doesn't budge. Next, Bree proposes to check all the seals and the edges to see if they can find a weak spot somewhere. While looking around, Jana finds a pair of swim trunks and a condensation hole on the fiberglass, and Bree manages to get the plastic cover from one of the wall's many openings. She breaks it in half and tries to saw the cover hole with a shard while Jana keeps making morbid and sarcastic comments, especially when Bree tells her the big news, she got engaged to her boyfriend David. She points out that this isn't her fault, which Jana snorts at and calls her Miss Perfect. Jana reminds Bree she had a hard time in rehab and it only got worse when she came back and didn't find her sister at home. Bree apologizes and says she has her own life now, Jana feels she is rubbing it in. That makes Bree come to the conclusion that it was her sister that threw the ring in the water. Angry, she swims to the bottom of the pool and tries to free the ring from the grill again, and this time she succeeds. Bree resurfaces to find Jana sawing the cover hole with a shard and getting a cut on her hand. She tells her she thinks the grill could be heavy enough to break the fiberglass, but she isn't strong enough to pry it off, so she asks Jana for help, she doesn't accept because she thinks it is pointless. Suddenly they hear a little tune ringing, it is Bree's phone getting a call from David. This gives Bree hope he will notice she is gone soon, but Jana insists on having a negative attitude. After the call is sent to the answering machine, Bree dives back in and tries to pry the grill off to no avail. As night falls, Jana continues to look for a weak spot while Bree stands against a wall, looking unwell. After arguing over David, who is calling again, Jana notices her sister's state and asks her what is wrong, Bree confesses she has been diagnosed with diabetes three years ago and she needs her shot, which she left in her purse. If she doesn't take it soon, she may fall into a diabetic coma. While Clara returns to the building to finish her shift, Bree and Jana are taking turns sawing the cover hole. Jana notices the burnt marks on Bree's arm and points out they never talked about it but they should because her counselor in rehab advised her too. She wants to know what truly happened the day their dad died, since she doesn't remember anything and only knows the bits and pieces their mom and Bree told her through the years. Bree calls their dad a monster, and tells Jana that night he came back drunk and smoking a cigarette that fell on his pillow when he passed out. A fire started right by his head, but he didn't scream because he was so drunk he didn't even notice what was going on. Bree got the burnt marks on her arm while trying to wake him up. Their chat is suddenly interrupted when Clara enters the room. She finds Bree's purse when her phone starts ringing again, and she comes closer to steal it when she suddenly hears the girls calling out for help. Clara asks them how they ended up in there and lets them talk while looking through Bree's wallet and phone, and only stops herself when she notices the security cameras are on. After telling the girls to wait for a moment, she goes to the control room to turn the cameras off, then she comes to the pool and asks the sisters some weird questions followed by a request for the phone's password. Bree gives it to her, 
thinking she will call the police, but instead, Clara teases her for her pictures and plays David's messages for them. Jonna gets impatient and insults her, so Clara cuts to the chase and explains she has many bills to pay because she can't find a real job after being in prison. If the sisters want her to get them out, Brie must give her the PIN code for her ATM. The sisters don't accept it first, but Clara turns off the heater and threatens them with a freezing night, so Brie has no other choice but to give her what she wants. Clara leaves with Brie's wallet, and the sisters huddle for warmth. A couple of hours later, Brie is starting to really suffer the cold, so Jonna decides it's her turn to try to pry off the grill, but fear doesn't allow her to even go close to it. When she resurfaces, she notices Brie has fallen asleep and rushes to wake her up. She confesses she didn't even try with the grill and calls herself useless, wishing she could be more like her sister. Brie assures her she already is, she just can't see it. Afterward, Jonna tries to saw the cover hole with the shard again, which Brie thinks is a waste of energy, but Jonna replies moving is the only thing she can do to stay warm. Brie pushes her to talk about her suicide attempt, and Jonna explains she feels like she has monsters inside, eating at her. Their dad had abused them, and his voice has never left Jonna's mind. Suddenly, an eye appearing on the cover hole startles the sisters. It's Clara, who complains about Brie only having 80 bucks in her bank account. The sisters beg for her help and she gets angry, saying they aren't special because she has problems too. After telling them she is considering leaving them there to die, Clara leaves the room to gather her thoughts. Jonna then gets an idea and starts sharpening the plastic shard against the wall before calling for Clara. When she comes back, Jonna pretends to be crying and apologizes before saying she has a confession to make. She speaks very softly on purpose, so when Clara puts her ear on the hole to hear her better, Jonna stabs her with a shard. Furious, Clara goes to the bathroom to check on her wound, then goes into the control room to turn on the automatic pool cleaning system, causing the girls to begin suffocating in chlorine. They try to block the jets with their hands and the swimming trunks they had found earlier, but they prove to be too strong. Brie loses consciousness for a few seconds and Jonna has to keep her from drowning as she swims to the hole and tells Clara she's killing them. This makes Clara realize the danger in her actions, so she takes pity on them and returns to the control room to turn the cleaning system off. When she comes back, she tells the sisters she's the one in control now and demands Brie to hand in her ring in exchange for their freedom. Jonna asks her not to do it, but Brie accepts, seeing as they don't have any other options. Now that she has the ring, Clara leaves the room as she tells them she'll let them out after she is good and ready. Needing some time alone, Brie swims to the opposite side of the pool and falls asleep on the pool buoys. She dreams of David bringing in some firefighters with him to rescue her, but her sister continues to drown. When she wakes up, she finds Jonna with a plastic shard against her neck, thinking of killing herself. Brie talks her out of it and promises her she'll be there for her when all this is over, Jonna apologizes and hugs her. Meanwhile, Clara stares at the ring and listens to David's messages, trying to make up her mind. When she goes back to the pool, Brie tells Jonna to follow her lead. The girls tell Clara they know she isn't a monster and, after all the thinking they did down there, they decided they will change how they do things from now on. Clara feels bad for them and finally accepts to help, but when she goes to the control room and punches in the code, it doesn't work. She informs the girls of this, and they ask her to call the cops instead, but Clara is afraid of going back to prison because it almost killed her the first time. So after putting Bree's purse back on the benches, she leaves the building. A few more hours pass, and Bree is growing very weak. When Jonna comes to check on her, Bree has a confession to make. Because she saw what their dad did to Jonna when he used to go into her room, she decided she had to kill the monster. So the night of the fire, she didn't try to wake him up, she actually held him down so he could burn to ashes and get out of their lives. Jonna tells her it's her turn to carry her now, so after leaving Brie resting on the pool buoys, she dives in and tries to pry off the grill again. Her first two tries are unsuccessful, but she gets an idea for the third, she grabs the swimming trucks they had found earlier and wraps them around the grill's bars, now she can pull with more ease. She has to try twice before it finally gives in, Jonna quickly grabs it and takes it to the surface, where she finds Brie unconscious. After reanimating her with mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation, she uses the grill to hit the fiberglass cover and finally manages to break it. Both of the girls get some cuts on their bodies as Jonna drags Brie through the pointy hole. Her sister continues to be unconscious, so Jonna brings her purse over and looks for her insulin pen. She gives Brie her shot and, after some exasperating moments, she finally wakes up. Their happiness is short-lived, however, because Clara suddenly appears in front of them, pointing her gun with intention to kill because she's afraid the girls may tell on her. Jonna tells her she understands she's been through a lot and begs her not to do anything to Brie because it's all she has in her life. Clara ends up feeling sympathetic for them and puts the gun away before handing them back the ring. Jonna grabs Brie's phone and calls the police, but also tells Clara to leave before they arrive. 
The movie ends with Brie waking up on a stretcher, surrounded by paramedics and her sister. Jonna gives her back the ring, and when Brie asks how she got it back, Jonna says they've killed the monster. The sisters hug before the paramedics take them away. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.